been a lot of big changes. Hi guys, it's been a while. I wanted to do a video with an update of what's been going on in my life because I haven't been filming because there have been a lot of big changes that I've had to get my head around. So the last time I spoke to you, I was working at lunchtime in a primary school. Unfortunately, we were made redundant. So we were told before summer that we wouldn't be going back in September, which obviously <laughs> I was only there for a year. So it was a massive blow. I just started getting used to it. Kind of felt like I was getting somewhere with explaining my different needs and then making accommodations for me and stuff. So it was a massive deal for me to be told you're not going to have a job to come back to. It's to do with all the school budget cuts. They just felt like it would be more beneficial for them to have the TAs do the lunchtime cover rather than have like a whole separate team of people that they're just paying for an hour anyway. So obviously that was like, whoa, what is going on? What am I going to do? But I had already talked about the fact that I was interested in being a TA at some point, a teaching assistant. So I looked into courses, I got in touch with the college and because of my previous experience and the fact that I already had a childcare qualification, I was able to go straight on to level two. So I've been doing that. Going to the college is just once a week and I've been doing that for probably about a month now. I do have to do a placement for it. You have to do 30 day placement so they recommend twice a week the course is until the end of January so it's not a yearly course it's 17 weeks including like uh, holidays like half term and stuff so end of January I will get a teaching assistant qualification and I can look for jobs in a school but um, yeah I've got to do a placement for that and I haven't found one personally well my tutor said to me last week that he does have one available so I'm gonna look into that but the area I wanted the schools weren't getting back to him and then when I reached out to them they'd already filled all their spots um, because there are different courses so unfortunately I won't be able to do that but hopefully I will be able to do it in a different school it will just mean I'll have to use the bus um, which is fine so yeah that's the massive change that's been going on is I'm no longer working but it was just like a massive change that I was not prepared for and I just it just hit me like I didn't know I was like what am I gonna do with my life kind of thing so so far the course has been good like I said it's just once a week that we're actually in the college and it's five hours so it's not like a massive thing but obviously part of the qualification is going to be in the school and when we're at the school besides just learning like hands-on we do have to do things like uh, make a display or do some activities with the children that kind of thing so I'm excited to start that obviously it is nerve-wracking and obviously I do have mental health and autism diagnosis so it is a bit like massive deal so I have been in touch with autism organisations and I've been getting some advice of tools and things I can use for that. So the first thing I got before I got in touch with the organisation was I went on uh, Amazon and I got a personalised autism card. So that is what it says, hopefully that is focusing. <laughs> So obviously that just basically tells people a few few little bits about me. If I was ever in a situation where maybe I couldn't verbalise, I'd just show them that and be like, hey. So I did speak to somebody two weeks ago and while I was talking to this woman, she didn't have the resources at hand. It was a drop-in session. So I just went along and had to chat with her to see what they could offer. 
but she did give me a communication traffic light system. So this is what that looks like. Literally it just says if you can communicate or not. On the back you can put self-calming techniques and what might help you and there's uh, a space for an emergency contact or something like that. So that is another thing. And then I've also been sent, um, she sent me some information and there's something called a communication passport where I can sit down with her, like have an appointment with her and sit down and we can write out what I want people to know about my communication needs. The main thing I'm thinking at the moment is that when I am talking to someone, which um, I know is the same for a lot of people on the spectrum, we just say what we're thinking and then we can't think about how that's going to make somebody else feel or how it's coming across. So a lot of people will say that you're being rude, which has happened like my whole life. People are saying I'm being rude and I'm like, I'm not trying to be rude, I'm not trying to upset anybody, I'm just saying it how it is. So I think that's something I need to put on there is like, I'm not trying to be rude because it's not just the fact that I'm going to upset them or annoy them. It's the fact that if I think I've upset them or annoyed them, then it's going to upset me as well. So that it's going to be like a, a triggering situation for everybody. So I think it's something important. That's the only thing I've thought to put on there at the moment. And I'll probably put on the fact that I can't speak when I'm overwhelmed, which I haven't looked into it, but sounds like selective mutism to me and is something I've struggled with for like 10 years. And also the fact that I use Mechaton signs in those situations or I'll just write things down. So those are the only things at the moment I've thought to put on my communication passport. Um, I'm still thinking about it because it was only the end of last week that they told me about it, like some email. So that's what I've thought of at the moment. But yeah, that's what's been, <laughs> what's been going on with me. That's why I've been a bit MIA is I've been dealing with the fact that my whole life has just changed and I'm still dealing with it. I feel a lot better now that I I think like everything's slowly falling into place. So I feel better about it now than I did a month or two ago. I was not in a good place. It really did hit me. Well, for anyone, it's a big change, but the fact that I'd only been there for a year and I was just starting to get used to it and I had this whole routine and now I have no routine. That's still something that's kind of bugging me because at the moment, like I said, it's only college once a week and I haven't got my placement yet. So I think when I get my placement and I'll be going to my place for twice a week, it'll feel better and I'll feel more like there's a structure in my life. But at the moment, it's kind of a little bit all over the place, which is not good. But I'm sure we'll get there eventually. I mean, it's going to be worth it anyway, isn't it? When I get the qualification and I can start working in a school and obviously I can then put into place any adjustments that I might need for my autism and mental health. So yeah, that's what's been going on with me. I know people have been asking where I am, so I thought I'd do a little video and let you know I am fine. <laughs> now was not doing so great but I'm okay now and like I said things are slowly falling into place so I'm sure everything's gonna work out and I'll try and do some more videos for you guys so that was all I wanted to talk to you about I will see you guys next week also completely randomly I bought a rug for my living room so I just want to show you I'm so pretty let's just ignore my college bag so pretty. So yeah, I just wanted to show that to you because that's also something new. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, because of my previous, my what? <laughs> Um...